You know, I'm looking around, I see a bunch of leaders in here. And this is a good thing. Because you go to a lot of places, and you go to, you hear people talk about the problems. And they discuss the problems. And they analyze the problems. And they talk about the problems. And they look at what the issues are. And did I say that they talk about the problems? This is one of the things that conservatives do. And one of the things that I see in here is a group of leaders that are here to do something. And we're going to have, I'm going to have a little action item at the end of the day that I'm going to put up on each and every one of you. I'm going to have, raise your hand right now if you know the answer to this. I'm going to ask three real quick questions. And raise your hand if you know the answer right off the top of your head. How many of you know which congressional district you live in? How many of you know which state senate district you live in? How many of you know which county supervisor district you live in? Okay, at each one of those levels there were fewer and fewer hands. This is a room full of people who are politically active and that know these type of things. Now I'm going to ask you a quick question. How many of you know your zip codes? <laughs> You're laughing. You are laughing, but this is one of the things that goes on. The political process and the political parties do a lot of things to make this mystical that you have to know all of these different things. We're, we've got a project that we're going to be doing. I'm going to talk about it a little bit later, and we're going to use more. We're going to help uh, help President Obama. He's done a lot for this nation. He's increased gun sales. He's he's increased the conservative movement. He has increased the the outrage of the of the people that are just to the center, not to the right of center. I mean, we got God help him for what he's done to us. But he has done a lot of things, and he has more czars than any other president around. So what we're going to do here in San Diego and Southern California is we're going to create zip czars. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later on. We all know our zip codes, so keep that in mind. I'd like to introduce somebody to you who just walked in uh, that that we that we all, here in San Diego, we all know and we love and adore. Congressman Bill Bray, would you come up? Congressman is here, and I would like for him to just take a few minutes and, and speak to us about some of the things, news and views from Washington, D.C., from Brian Bilbray, the serving congressman in California. Thank you much. First of all, I want to thank uh, a lot of you in this uh, room, because uh, I would not have the pleasure of having to commute every week uh, if it wasn't for your support from our six. Um, and, uh, you know, let's face it, it, when people talk about campaigns buying money, you remind them of my campaign, no six. We had, what, 18 candidates? Um, we had five that were spent over uh, a million and a half. One of them spent 4.7 million in the primary, right? 4.7 million. Uh, kind of, that, that falls under the category of more dollars and cents. Uh, especially for a job that, pay, that, that <laughs> pays what it does. But, um, let me just say that there was a whole lot of people here who trusted me and supported me over the money. Didn't allow the seat to be bought. Uh, I think mostly because you remember uh, the, the great attention and appreciation I got from the big labor bosses in the 90s um, when they bought us into the Stone Age. And frankly, I, I think there was a real crisis there. I think all of us knew that this country was ready to go off the edge and give amnesty, and we were going to lose um, the control of not only our borders, but our government, our, our, our um, political process, and everything else. And if I can just remind you of one thing, is that when I say uh, we need to be smart, we need to be intelligent, we need to be careful, remember the Brian Bilbray who ran for office against a bunch of millionaires. And I still remember somebody coming up to me, um, and, our, uh, and the people here will remember it, and said, Brian, how do you think you're going to stop amnesty? You got the president wants to do amnesty, the Senate wants to do amnesty, the House wants to do amnesty. How can one member of Congress stop this whole thing? And I said, you just go in there and you just got to be persistent. You just basically got to be like a mother getting the kids to do their homework. I wish my mother had done that, I might not have got stuck in Congress. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, let's face it, um, we in San Diego, when I went to San Diego, 
I mean, came from San Diego, they voted me in. Remember, my speech on the House floor was two things. I want to thank the people of the 50th District of California, a classic California coastal district, very environmentally sensitive. They believe in recycling and congressmen. <laughs> but, and even the Democrats laughed when I said that. But then when I said, but I'm here for one reason and with one message, the people of San Diego sent me to tell you, you friends do not allow friends to give amnesty. You've got to, and when I said that, the Democrats stood up and turned their back to me. And frankly, I was proud they did that, because that's exactly what they did. Now let me just tell you, really, really frankly, here, we're among friends. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in a very, very scary, dangerous period for our republic. And the one thing I ask you to understand is, Doing well and doing good should be fun. But do not have so much fun that you lose focus on how important a task we have before us. The future of our grandchildren, the fact that it's not just the budget, it's immigration, it's budget, it's government structure, the relationship to federal government, the local government, all this stuff. If we do not do what is right in the next year, our children and our, our grandchildren will be living in a third world country. Just understand that. And don't get me wrong, I love going down to Latin America. I love going into Central America. I mean, I, I'm down there visiting my future constituents. We don't do something by operation. <laughs> but the fact is, I like visiting a third world country. I don't want my grandchildren to be forced to live in one. And that's what we're at. So if I tell you one thing, now is not the time to second guess and say, well, something ought to be done this way. I don't want to follow this path. And I'm going to be frank with you. Let me say something really blunt to everybody here. If the people in the United States are not willing to stand up when somebody is brave enough and smart enough and has the facts that Paul Ryan has, if we're not willing to back up this young man now when he's staying on being truthful, pack it in. Start packing and start heading to another country. Because Paul Ryan is the guy that everybody has talked about for years and decades. How many often do you say, why doesn't somebody stand up and be truthful to American people? Why doesn't somebody actually lay it out? And he is being assaulted. Now I'll tell you, I was very proud to go on MSNBC and talk down their, their guy that replaced um, Ed for a while after his little cheap shot at Colton. And I basically point out, Ryan's a modern proposal. Ryan doesn't cut off one senior from Medicare and Social Security. In fact, he guarantees that his old guys we're going to have the same program we have always been promised. All it does is tell these young kids that we're going to save the program for you by providing you with a program that's more like the Congressional Health Care Plan. And that is sustainable. 